What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm showing off one of my favorite decks of all time and that is Altergeist. Now yes, if you guys didn't know, Pukri was just announced to be in Brothers of Legend, which I'm super excited for, but people still do want to play the deck now before Pukri comes out. So if you guys want to do that, I have the perfect deck profile for you. But if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. Now I will say one thing just before we get into the video. A lot of you guys are not subscribing who are watching. It would be really nice if you guys did and supported the channel just a little bit. It helps the algorithm, helps the channel grow, and I love seeing the Spanko Squad get bigger and bigger as we go. So anyways, thank you guys all for being here. I really do appreciate every single one of you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and that's really all I gotta say. So uh, on to the video. Okay, so to get things started off with the main deck, you are of course starting off with triple multi faker. I'm gonna be honest, most of these ratios are pretty standard, I would say. So triple faker, triple milliseek, triple marionetter, double silk, and one conk. Now, conk is amazing. I'm not gonna lie to you, conk really, I, I hate the card sometimes, but the card is so insane. And if, especially if you loop it, it's such an insane card. So this is the ratio that I'm going up with right now. And I think this ratio is perfect. I will say this though, once Pukuri is in the TCG, which should be soon within the next few weeks, this ratio will not change. Now I'm gonna say that. This ratio will not change. I don't think this ratio needs to be changed at all. And I'll tell you guys, I'll definitely do an updated profile for when Pukuri does come out. But however, if you guys do want to play this for right now, these are, I think, the best um, ratios. And I'll do an updated version, of course, when Pukuri does come out. So these are just the ratios that I'm playing. Conquery is just insane. You can't not play this. This card is just so, so good in a lot of situations. So of course, this is the bread and butter of your deck. And then this is something that I'm going to discuss. So I'm playing Triple Ash and two Gamma Seal, okay? Gamma Seal in the main deck, let me just say this, is literally a lifesaver. I've been going to locals and this card overperforms for me. Like when I say overperforms, the card is insane. At one point I even was like, hey, maybe I play triple Gamma Seal and two Ash. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, hand traps aren't as good as they once were. The reason for that is because everyone is playing cards like triple tactical talents, they're playing cross out. So I don't like Ash Blossom as actually as much as I did before. However, the Gamma Seals, let me explain this. Gamma Seal is insane for a lot of reasons. One, it really helps you out anything. Like that's literally what it is. Now this deck struggles and in a lot of testing, I've noticed that this deck does kind of struggle with something like DPE, Destroy Phoenix Enforcer, because it keeps coming back every single turn. Now you guys might be arguing like, hey, but you have stuff like protocol for it. The thing is, if you protocol the on field effect, it'll just activate in graveyard. So what you need with this deck really to stop the DPE is you need to get the DPE in the graveyard, then protocol the graveyard effect, which a lot of the times is gonna be hard to happen because protocol is probably gonna get popped with your DPE anyways. So that's why I like stuff like Gamma Seal because cards like Dragoon, cards like DPE, especially in the meta now, are really hard to out. And sometimes an Ash is not enough to stop these combo decks anyway. So might as well just have the out to the big monster they're summoning, right? Most of the time as well, you're not gonna be summoning Multifaker on your turn, maybe not until like turns three, four, five, whatever. So Gamma Seal is always gonna be live in that sense. And that's really why I wanted to up Gamma Seal to three. Honestly, the thing is, I might actually cut Ash Blossom in the future altogether, but as of right now, this is how I'm playing it. This is a monster lineup and I think it's been working really well. Again, the only change is maybe triple Gamma Seal because this card's insane. One last thing I want to say about Gamma Seal is the reason this card is also really good is because if you Gamma Seal your opponent's monster, like especially like a big boss monster, you can just silk it back to your hand, which is so insane. So there's a lot of synergy with Gamma Seal. So that's why I really like it. And to out it, I know your monsters aren't that big. Even if you don't have the Silk Widus, uh, Milicy can always send it. So you can always out this card. You'll never have an, a situation where you'll have the Gamma Seal on your opponent's side of the field and be like, oh, I can't out my Gamma Seal. You'll always have an out somehow. Then for the spell cards, we're going to keep it short. We don't play that many spells. We're just playing Triple Extrav and one Duality. Now I'm going to be honest, once Pukuri comes out, I'm probably going to cut Duality altogether. Duality is really, really good to help you dig into your deck. It also works with Extravagance. And I honestly like to play Extravagance more than I do like to play Prosperity. And I'll be completely honest with you. I did try Prosperity in this deck, but Extravagance is just better. Mostly because this deck does rely on its traps. So you don't really care which traps you're getting. Of course, choosing which card you're getting with Prosperity is always great. But the nice thing with Extrav, is if you're drawing multiple traps, it's just better in this deck. Like you would rather draw two traps or a trap and a monster than just add one card. Plus on top of that with prosperity, your opponent's gonna be knowing what you're adding. So if you are adding a trap, let's say a strike, they know that they're gonna have to be playing around a strike. Or if you add a multi-faker, they now know you have a multi-faker in hand, right? So that's why I like extravagance a little bit more. I like the mystery of extravagance. Duality I really like as well for right now. I think once a Pukuri comes out, I'm probably gonna cut the duality altogether. This deck is super, super consistent. This is just the lineup I like to play right now. So lastly, onto traps, and you guys can see we're playing a lot of traps. So we are playing triple personal spoofing. I still like this card at three, especially with hand traps not being as prevalent anymore. 
Uh, this card goes off a lot of the time. Double protocol and one manifestation. Now I'll be honest with you, some people like to tell me to play double manifestation. One is perfectly enough. This card is really, really good because one, with Silquitus, you can always put this card back in your hand. But on top of that, you're never gonna really use the banish effect unless you have no other way to get a trap to your hand, right? So this card is always recyclable. I like it as a one-off. It's not really good turn one either. That's why I don't like it, um, at more than one at least. So like, I, I don't really wanna draw this. I really wanna set this off of the Marionetter. So I think these ratios are perfectly fine. Double protocol is great. Sometimes I wanna up protocol to three. You'll see with all the other traps that you're playing, I think double protocol is fine. Then you're playing the best Altergeist trap card, uh, Infinite Impermanence. Imperm is just amazing, to be honest. And we all know how good this card is. And with uh, Multifaker, this card is disgusting. Literally the best two card combo in the game. Imperm plus Multifaker is just so, so good. Turn zero, just going Imperm, summon Multifaker, have a bounce without you even having to do anything, you're already setting up disruption. So this card is insane. Next, you're playing Triple Solemn Strike, of course, Triple Solemn Judgment to protect your back row. You don't wanna lose something like Twin Twister or Lightning Storm. So Triple Solemn Judgment, of course, this card is insane. Then you are playing Triple Torrential. This card is disgusting, bro. A lot of the time, especially in, in the meta today, where people wanna make their Link Monsters or wanna make their Synchros with Sword Soul or you wanna make DPE, stuff like that. Torrential Tribute is insane because if you just Torrential when they have two monsters on the field, they're gonna have a really hard time playing through it. Torrential is just it's such an insane card. And then we are playing one Imperial Order, of course. Again, you guys saw we're only playing four spells. So IO is just really, really good in this deck. And once Pukuri comes out, you're only gonna be playing three spells. So yeah, IO is just insane. This card is crazy. And so you have to be playing it. It shuts out so many decks. But I think this trap ratio is perfect. I don't wanna change this at all. It works so well specifically for the format right now. So yeah, I wouldn't change this at all. So just before we get into the extra deck here, I do wanna say if you guys want your own custom Spanko YGO sleeves, or you guys want to upload your own custom designs, you guys can check out yourplaymat.com. If you use my code SPANKOYGO10YP, you guys can get 10% off your order. And I think they're having some Black Friday stuff going on right now. So if you guys want your own Spanko sleeves, your own playmats, your own custom designs, make sure to check them out and use my code for 10% off. So for the extra deck, we are playing Triple Hextia, of course. This is one of your best cards. When the new Link 4 comes out, I'm not playing Prime Banshee, by the way, but when the Link 4 comes out, that card is going to be insane as well, but you have to be playing Triple Hextia. Triple Link Karibo as well. Of course, this is one of your only Link monsters, really, you go into besides Hextia, because this with Milaseek is really important. Then you're playing one All Mirage as well as one Anima. Now, this is another card that I want to mention why I really like to play Gamma Seal in the main deck, because if you go Gamma Seal, you summon your Milaseek, you can make Anima and then take the Gamma Seal back. So this has a lot of synergy with the Gamma Seal itself. Also, just helping you going second, like this card, is really really good especially if you go like Milaseek, you go battle phase attack them directly you send something on their side of the field then use the Milaseek to make anima then anima can take another monster they control this card is really really good okay so that's why i really like playing this i would 100 recommend playing this card it's really great then for the rest of it honestly the rest of the extra deck is really just filler one cerberus one phoenix one unicorn now i will say i know people like to play the halk of ibrax combo with celine so you can go halk summon back your alter guys because it's a spellcaster then you can go into celine and then celine into like an access code or something like that i'm not playing that combo and i'll show you guys what i'm playing but the reason i'm not playing that combo is because i'm not playing valor in the main deck so the only way to do that combo is with ash which is never really going to come up now that combo works really well if you are playing stuff like valor in the main deck but again like i'm not so that's why i'm not playing that combo so instead i'm playing ip now ip is really really good there's a lot of situations where you can make ip under hextia then on your opponent's turn go ip and hextia into like a unicorn you could also go into potentially an access code actually as well you can't go into boros orb with that but you can go into access code with that and that's really really good because on your opponent's turn now you're going to be going into access code with your ip or your unicorn is mostly what you're going to be going to but you're also going to be getting hex the effect off the search so that gives you a lot of plus so that's why i like the access code the ip the hextia again we are playing one boral sword this doesn't come up too often but i do like to play it because when it does come up it's really really good and then on top of that i am playing this is like a tech of mine and i'm playing one underworld goddess this card is really really good a lot of the time in the mid to late game especially if you're grinding you'll have like three to four monsters on the board and sometimes you just need an out to one of your opponent's monsters this kind of acts as a kaiju for you in the sense of like hey if i randomly have four monsters out on the field like let's say i have a multi faker a silk a marionetter and then on my turn i'll just go like normal summon a mila seek right let's just something like that and your opponent has like a dpe or your opponent has something like a dragoon you just go into your underworld goddess and this card is really really strong really really insane card um doesn't come up too often though i'll be honest with you but i think it's a really cool idea it's a really cool tech that you guys can try playing and it works really really well but again once the new link four comes out i'm gonna be honest i'm probably gonna cut a lot of these because these are the important ones up here Otherwise, like you're gonna wanna play three of the link four. 
maybe two, but two to three of them. So you'll probably cut out like a Cerberus, maybe the Underworld, maybe the Boral Sword. Just a lot of options, but I just wanted to show you what this deck could look like pre Brothers of Legend, pre Pukuri, pre the Link 4, which I forgot the name of, but yeah. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That's my take on how Altergeist should be played in today's format. And I think it's amazing. I think the deck is doing super, super well right now. People are sleeping on it. One thing I didn't mention in the video is that the deck is really good because it doesn't lose to what other meta decks lose to, if that makes sense. So because of that, Altergeist has a really big advantage. A lot of people are not prepared to play against Altergeist. They're not prepared to deal with some of the Altergeist traps and the Altergeist playstyle. And with Pukuri coming out, I'll make sure to do an updated deck profile. But for now, this is how we're playing it. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and with that, Spanko, sign out. Peace.